Our next speaker to the day is an amazing advocate for the young people in Australia. In 2007 and 2008, he journeyed with the World Youth Day Cross and Icon as an ambassador for Christ. He is really a missionary of God's love. So can we please welcome Father Chris Ryan to lead us in opening Woo! prayer. pretty cool to be in Rio. In my last year of school, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I was bewildered by the choices that were before me and I wasn't at all sure I knew what I wanted. And so I started university and I began a law degree, mainly because I had the marks. And after a year of that, I did two weeks of arts. Can anybody beat that? And. Uh, thinking I might become an English and RE teacher. I started going out with a girl, but I wasn't entirely sure that she was the person that I should be getting married to, which is kind of obvious now. <laughs> so I had all sorts of questions about the choices that were before me. The one question I wasn't prepared to ask was one to the Lord Jesus because I wasn't prepared to ask him what he wanted me to do with my life. But the funny thing is, that's actually the key question. What does he want for your life and for mine? You and I live in a culture of choices, but in this matter, it's not so much about your choice. You can decide many other things what kind of seal you're going to have, whether you're going to come to Rio. But when it comes to what you are to do with your life, the key question is what does Jesus want for you? Now here's the key to that, lest you be starting to feel very scared. And the key is this, that you find your deepest fulfillment you will find the thing that you were created for when you ask him what it is that he wants you to do, who he wants you to be. As St. Augustine put it so beautifully, in his service is perfect freedom. In God's service is perfect freedom. So what does he want you to do? Because the issue, as we are invited by Pope Francis and by his predecessor, Pope Benedict, when we think about what it means to go make disciples, the issue is not whether you should do that or you shouldn't do that. By your baptism, you're to make disciples. Jesus asked that of all of us, no exceptions. No, the issue is not whether you should or shouldn't make disciples, it's how you're going to do it. How are you going to make disciples? The Lord Jesus asked me to be a consecrated brother and a priest. There are some of you here who are called to priesthood. And I don't just mean the seminarians that have traveled with you. There are some of you here who are called to be priests. If you would but ask the Lord Jesus what he wants you to do with your life. There are men and women here who are called to be consecrated brothers and sisters who are called to be disciples and to make disciples by the witness of their lives and by their presence in all sorts of situations and circumstances. And some of you are called to be consecrated brothers and sisters. Some of you are called to be married and through the love of your spouse and the love of your children and as places of hospitality in your marriage, you are to make disciples in that way. Some of you are called to be lay leaders as teachers, as youth ministers, as you work in ministries of justice and peace, promoting the church's social teaching. Some of you are called to make disciples that way. Some of you are called to make a difference and to make disciples in the world of work, as doctors, nurses, journalists, and a thousand other occupations, some of which probably don't even exist yet. But you are called to make a difference in the world of work, to transform 
your work environments so that disciples might be made there. Some of you are called to be artists and musicians and digital innovators to transform our culture. You're called to make disciples in that way. And so I want to say to you again, the key question is what does Jesus want you to do? How is he calling you to make disciples? Make no, mis make, make no mistake about it. He invites you. He calls you to do that. How are you going to respond? Some of you have had the chance to go up Corvocado Mountain. Some of you have encountered a sloth. But all of you have seen the great picture, the great statue of Christ the Redeemer. Some of you will only see that perhaps from Copacabana Beach. Whether you need to look back over your photos or whether you need to gaze up at some moment while we're here in Rio, I want to in, in, encourage you and invite, invite you and suggest you to look up at that extraordinary statue of Christ our Redeemer and ask him the question, what do you want me to do with my life, Lord? He is Lord of this city. He's Lord of the universe. And he's also Lord of your life. Don't be afraid, as I was, to ask him the question. I can honestly say to you, it was the best question I ever asked because I got the answer that I really needed. I promise that's true for you too. Ask him the question. We're going to come into a time of prayer now together. I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. We're going to have a liturgy, but we're going to begin with a moment of silence. And so I'd like you, in that moment of silence, to allow all that has happened to bring you to this point, to this moment all that's happened on your pilgrimage here to Rio so far. And to allow Christ the Redeemer, who stands over this city, but who also stands over the door of your heart, allow him to speak to you in the silence. <laughs> 